Good evening. Welcome to our Wednesday night broadcast here at Battlefield Baptist Church. We're uh, so glad you're able to tune in, watch along with us, and uh, got a special treat tonight. Uh, I've got a uh, Brother Don's going to be singing for us here in just a little bit, and boy, we appreciate them being here tonight. And uh, but uh, Daniel's going to come. We're going to have some good congregational songs, and then we're going to be talking tonight about and preaching about joy in Christ. And so I uh, pray that you have your Bible handy when we get to preaching time here in just a little bit. Follow along with us, and I uh, pray to be a blessing to you tonight. So Daniel, you come. We'll get started in service tonight. Good evening, everyone. We're going to be singing out of our red hymnal tonight. Uh, Trust and Obey is the first song, uh, and it's on page 157. When we walk with the Sing along with us on this part. Oh. 
Jazz will come up and sing with us. Uh, if you have your hymnal, we're still singing out of that. It's in page 92. It's just a little talk with Jesus.
beautiful song. Amen. Peace, peace. Wonderful peace. I'm glad I have that. And I'm glad I know who the peace speaker is. Amen. Well, if you have your Bible with us tonight, we ask you to get it out. Turn over to the book of John. John chapter number 15. And uh, we want to preach just from one verse tonight. John chapter number 15 to verse number 11 is where we're going to be looking at. Uh, John 15, verse number 11. It says, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Father, we bow before you again tonight that we're thankful for the opportunity to be in your house. Thank you for those who have assembled here tonight. And what we ask that you would help us one more time as we look into your word. Father, we pray your word uh, does its intended work as it goes out. And Lord, I pray uh, Lord, that you would just continue to use us tonight for your honor and your glory. Father, these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you think about that. He says, uh, he says, I have spoken of you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. So what was the joy of Christ? Well, uh, many times if you want to know what something is, we'll go to the dictionary and we'll try to look up the word and we'll find the word and we'll find the meaning. Sometimes even in the text we'll find the meaning of how it's used in context there in the verses. But really, if you want to know what the joy of Christ is, if you look in Habakkuk chapter number 3. Habakkuk chapter number 3 and verse 17 it says, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat, the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. You read that and you're thinking, how in the world could that be the definition of the joy of Christ? Well, because even in the midst of everything that's going on, I, and I, I see that happening today, even in the midst of everything that's going on currently in our country. Here's what I see. If you look at verse 18, he says, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. And he will make my feet like hinds feet. And he will make me to walk upon my high places to the chief singer on my stringed instruments. So in these verses, here's what we find. We find the cause and the effect, really, of the Christian's true joy. Amen? Uh, as in the case many times, here's what we usually find. We find the order reversed. We find usually there's rejoicing first. Uh, then we see the effect of the rejoicing. Then we see what happened before the joy. And we also see the cause of joy. But in these verses here in 18 through 19, we see and we find the cause of joy. The God of my salvation. Listen, true Christian joy can only come from one place. And that is the God of heaven. Amen. Uh, and it doesn't matter what circumstance. It doesn't matter what you may be facing. It doesn't matter what's going on in this world at a current time. It doesn't matter how, how bad you may feel one day. God is still God. And he is still the God of our salvation. Amen. And in verses 17 and 18, we find the effect there. Uh, you read that first verse and you think, wow, well, things are bad. Uh, what if there's no, there's no herd? What if there's no, uh, no uh, fields? What if there's no produce? There's nothing to eat. There's, there's no way to sustain ourselves. Listen, things are going to go wrong. Life is hard. We know that. Amen. And, but rejoicing comes from the inner peace and that inner fountain of joy that we have only in Christ Jesus. Amen. Uh, we may find something, we may purchase something, uh, that we may have something that will bring us a uh, temporal joy, but that is soon vanished and it's soon gone. Amen. Uh, listen, you think about where is our real joy? Where does that come from? Where does that spring from? That springs from the Holy Spirit living within us. That springs from the fact that we know that we have been bought with the price that we have been saved, born again, amen. We know that our name is recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. And friend, that is a joy that we possess uh, that nobody can take away from us, nor no matter what circumstance we go through, it will not change the outcome of what we have already done when we, when we ask Christ to be Lord and Savior of our life. 
Listen, there was a day when praise and rejoicing was spontaneous. Uh, I, I thought about how many times I've been in meetings where a testimony service broke out. And people began to just bring glory and honor to God. And thank Him for what He's done. And I thought about uh, how many times and how many meetings we've been in that. But yet I see, it, 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 listen, in the past couple of years, what have we seen? We've seen that kind of fade to the background. Uh, almost like nobody wants to interrupt the service. Nobody wants to uh, say anything. Or, or our joy is so gone and our joy is so low because we're looking at what the events that are happening in life uh, that it's robbing us of the real joy that we possess that now we don't even want to testify to the fact of how good good God is because we are so burdened down with what's going on right in front of us and we're missing the big picture. Listen, our joy is not because of things that happened to us. Our joy is because of what happened the day we made Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. Listen, we live in a day where pastors feel the necessity to stir up our emotions and they do that by flesh, fleshly music. They do that by fleshly preaching. And what does that, what does that produce? Things of the flesh. That is not godly. Uh, and, and I thought, here's what, here's what has happened in our modern day churches. We have pastors that have become entertainers. Uh, we have music that it does not bring glory and honor to God. Amen. The, you think about the hymns of the faith. Uh, I remember when we first got a uh, brand new organ here at the church. And uh, the gentleman came out. He said, I'm going to come out. We'll set everything up. We'll demo it for you. And man, could he play an organ. But he said, y'all still sing out of the red back hymnal. I said, yes, we do. He said, I can't believe that. I haven't seen one of those in years. And I thought, here's a man that had been in church after church after church setting up organs. And he said he hadn't seen one in years. I thought, how sad that is. The hymns of the faith, think about it. They no longer cause rejoicing. I, I thought about that song we sing, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me just a little bit ago. Listen, that ought to be the Christian national anthem, amen? And every time we sing that song, we ought to be reminded of the day that we accepted Christ as our Savior and what we have in Him, not what we have done, but in the finished work of Calvary, amen, and Christ being obedient to the cross as He went there, as He blessed and died, amen, as he was buried in that tomb, but praise God on that third and glorious day he didn't stay there, amen he resurrected just as he said and because of that, we have a joy that the world says I don't know what you Christians get so excited about, listen, we serve a risen Savior the song says he's in the world today, but I'm glad he also lives within my heart amen, amen. listen, the hymns of the faith no longer no longer bring rejoicing. Think about our modern day church, our modern day worship service. It's nothing more than entertainment. So instead of reproving and rebuking and exhorting with all long suffering and doctrine, most preaching and most music reflects what's going on in the world today. And most professing Christians, let's be honest, are more worldly than spiritual. Both rejoicing and joy are to be despite our circumstance. And I thought, how many times have we, have we got up in the morning, have we went about our day, and we got back home, and we made this comment, well, we had a bad day. You know, that was circumstances that happened to us. But guess what? You didn't lose your salvation. Yeah. Amen? God's still on the throne. Heaven is still real. Hell is still hot. Amen. And I'm glad I'm not going there. Amen. So both rejoicing and joy are, are to be despite our circumstances, not because of them, but most Christians live in a place of discouragement with very little joy. In other words, it doesn't take very much to tip the scale to where we're discouraged. And listen, that's where Satan wants us to be. Amen. Because when we're discouraged, how can we be effective on having a, a, an influence or being a witness for the cause of Christ? We can't. Why is it most people are living in a place of discouragement? Why is it that even Christians today find themselves in that place? Well, I believe, number one, because of our sinfulness. 
Nobody wants to admit that they're wrong. Nobody wants to admit that they're sin. Nobody wants to admit that they've got a problem that needs to be dealt with. Matthew chapter 24 verse 12 says, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. I want you to think just for a minute how many folks you know personally that used to be in the house of God, that used to serve the Lord, and now they're not. I want you to think about that real quick and how many folks come to mind when you think about that. Listen, why has that happened? Why, why have we allowed that to take us out of the place of worship, to take us out of the house of God? Because, he says, uh, iniquity, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. God's people are God's people. There is no doubt about it. And I'm not, I'm not arguing the fact of that. But here's what I am letting you know, that God's people can still sin. And when we allow sin to creep in, when we allow sin of any kind, when we allow it to take up residence in our heart and in our life, friend, I'm telling you, it is going to spring forth roots and it's going to be a bitter, bitter time in our life. And we begin to walk in a guilty distance away from God. I thought, how many times have our children done something that's wrong and they knew it was wrong and we had to punish them? And because of that, they weren't Right by our side, everywhere we went, they walked at a guilty distance. I thought it was the same thing that I've done with my father. When my father would ask me a question, I did something wrong. I didn't go running up to his side and sit in his lap. No, I was at a guilty distance. And friend, that is the same way we treat God. When there is sin in our life and we don't deal with it the way we need to and we allow it to go on and we allow that to take hold and take root in our life, we begin to walk in a guilty distance away from God because we know it's not right, but we just don't want to deal with it. I believe also not because just of our sinfulness, but because of our situations. Think about it when Peter stepped out of the boat in, in Matthew chapter 14, verse 30. He says, but when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried saying, Lord, save me. God's people have their eyes upon the wind and upon the waves of circumstance, not upon Christ. What have we seen over the last few days playing out in this country? Everybody has their eyes on, on the circumstance. Everybody has their eyes on the wind and the waves that is making its way through. Everybody's got a comment. Everybody's trying to say, well, this should happen and that should happen. But it has changed what? Nothing. Until God's people and until we start praying about situations more than just offering our opinion, not much is going to change. Amen. Peter looked down, he saw the wind, he saw the waves, he saw the surroundings, he saw everything that was going on, and it said he was afraid, and when he took his eyes off the Lord, what happened? He began to sink, we know that. Many Christians live in defeat with no joy at all. For the world, joy is found in circumstances. Uh, I, I, there are things that happen in our life that do bring us a temporal joy. Uh, things that maybe somebody's thinking of us. They send us something, send us a card, uh, make a phone call, just a chat. Maybe they come by to visit. Hey, listen, all of those things bring joy, but it's temporal. Well, listen to Luke chapter 12, 16 through 21. It says, He spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, What shall I do? So he's dealing with this, this little blessing that he's getting. He says, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And he says, I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Friend, that is... That is the slogan of most people today. Take it easy. Eat, drink, and just have fun. Listen, you don't need God right now. We don't need God in our life. Listen, we need God more today than we ever have. We need the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, uh, to work in us and work through us. And God told him, he says, but God said unto him, thou fool. He said, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose? Shall those things be which thou hast provided? 
So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Well, that ought to speak volumes to us tonight. Amen. And then notice this, for the Christian joy is found despite circumstances. Listen, we've all had things happen to us. We've all had things happen throughout the day. And maybe we just felt like we were having a bad day. But it could be could have been just a series of circumstances that happened. Uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 4, he says, Great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is my glorying of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceeding joyful in all our tribulation. I thought, could we say that? Could we say that we're exceedingly joyful in all of our tribulation? You know what I bet we'd say? No. We don't like tribulation, do we? We don't like it when times get hard. We don't like it when, when circumstances present themselves and there's a challenge ahead of us. 2 Corinthians 8 verse 2 says, How that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded under the riches of their liberality. Colossians 1.11, Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power under all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. 1 Thessalonians 1, 6, And you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. Listen, true joy is found despite circumstances. That is exactly what we saw in the book of Habakkuk when we begin to read and read about how, th how bad things were, all the things that were going wrong. But in spite of all that, God was still God. He was still happy about his salvation. He was going to joy in the Lord. Amen. And listen, no matter what may come our way, listen, he is still on the throne. He is still coming back one day. He is still taking his church home. And we're going to be for uh, eternally with him in heaven. Amen. That ought to be something that we have down inside of us that any time we have a hard day, any time we have a rough day, listen, we ought to be thinking about what is to come. Amen. Loss of joy. Think about it. how do we lose our joy? Loss of joy comes through a few different avenues. I believe loss of joy comes through losing the freshness of our salvation. Losing the freshness of our salvation. I remember we were door knocking one particular uh, Saturday evening, and I'm not going to mention the church, but the man answered the door. I invited him to come be part. He said, I've been a part of this church for so many years, and, and I, I've always been there, and I ain't changing. I thought, well, that didn't really sound much like joy, but that's what he told us. Now, how many times have we got to the place where we have forgotten what it was like when we were lost? How many times have we forgotten what it was like before we got saved? And then you think about the joy that came the day that you were saved. The day that you had made Christ Lord and Savior of your life. Friend, that was the best day. That was one of those days where I believe everybody had a similar experience where they felt like they were just burdened down with the, with the cares of the world and the sin and the weight. And yet when we, when we came to know Christ as our Savior, when He saved our soul, amen, listen, we felt light, we felt refreshed, we felt joy that we have never experienced before in our lifetime. But when we lose the freshness of our salvation, listen, we forget what it was like when we were lost. And then what about losing the love of our Savior? The Bible says we love Him because He first loved us. And when will God ever stop loving us? Never. Never. <laughs> Never. And I believe once we get, the, get that idea settled that he will never stop loving us, that he created us. He created us for his own glory. He created us to worship him. But he also gave us the, the, the mind and the ability to decide would we serve him? Would he be Lord and Savior of our life or would we reject him? He did give us that option. But when we lose the love of our Savior, we've lost sight of what it is to be a child of God. And then when we lose the excitement of our service, things begin to fade very quickly. 
When we begin to lose the excitement of our service, and our service could be a, a number of different things. We, it could be uh, making phone calls. It could be checking on folks. It could be door knocking. It could be witnessing on a daily basis. It could be leaving track somewhere. Listen, I, I, our witness, is, it could be a, a several different things, and God uses all of us in different ways. But when we lose the excitement of serving Him, we've forgotten what it was like when we got saved. So where, where the Christian finds his joy? Well, Christian joy is found, number one, in salvation. In Luke chapter 10, verse 20. Now I'm going to give you a few verses here. I'll just read these off in a row. But in Luke chapter 10, verse 20, it says, Notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. He doesn't say he rejoice because your circumstances are good. He doesn't say rejoice because I'm good. He says rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Friend, that is where we find true joy. It is in salvation. It is not of us. Listen, it's nothing we have done, but it's all of what he has already done for us. Psalm 35, 9. And my soul shall be joyful in the Lord. It shall rejoice in his salvation. Psalm 51, 12. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Psalm 132, 16. I will also clothe her priest with salvation and her saints shall shout aloud for joy. Isaiah 12, 3. Therefore with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. I thought about that song we used to sing, I keep going back to the well of grace. Listen, that's what that's talking about there. He showed us grace. Amen. We all deserved hell, but because of what he did at Calvary, we experienced his grace and we experienced his mercy. Listen, Christian joy is found in the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 15, 13 says, Now the God of hope. Fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'm glad we can have joy in our salvation, but we also have joy, uh, listen, in the Holy Spirit. I'm glad it dwells within. I'm glad it helps us to know right from wrong. I'm glad he gives us what we stand in need of on a daily basis. Joy is not found in the things of this world. Romans chapter 14, 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace. And listen to this, and joy in the Holy Ghost. I'll oh, say, so you're going to find joy in this world? <laughs> not the kind of joy we're talking about. There may be a temporal joy. There may be a, a, a joy because of your circumstance. There may be a joy because of some physical thing. But listen, we're talking about those things that are eternal. And that joy is only found uh, in Him. Amen. Not in this world. Christian joy is found also in God's Word. Matter of fact, Nehemiah chapter 8. We've been looking at the book of Nehemiah on Sunday morning. But in Nehemiah chapter 8, verses 9 through 12, it says in Nehemiah, which is a Tershatha, and the Ezra, the priest and the scribe, and the Levites that taught the people, said unto all the people, This day is holy unto the Lord your God. Mourn not, nor weep, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, Send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared for this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites stealed all the people saying, hold your peace for the day. This day is holy. Neither be ye grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and to drink and to send portions and to make great mirth because they had understood the words that were declared unto them. And what were those words? Out of his word. 
Amen. Out of the book of law, they begin to weep. And I thought, how many times have we read the word of God and it's touched us? Have we read the word of God and it's brought us face to face with a holy God? How many times uh, when we were before we were saved and the word of God was preached and it pierced us to the very core of who we are and it touched our soul and it helped us realize that we were lost and on our way to hell. Listen, we can find joy in the word of God. Amen. Christian joy is also found in the house of God. Amen. Psalm 42, verse 4. He says, When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. For I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God. With the voice of joy and praise with a multitude that kept holy day. I'm glad we have the opportunity to assemble. I know things are crazy right now. And I, we're, we're having service back again on Sunday. We're meeting still. But I, I know it's not like it used to be here a few weeks ago. But understand this. Being in the house of God, that is something special that we can get together and we can worship Him corporately in the house of God. We can praise Him publicly for what He's done. Amen. There is nothing that will take the place of being in the house of God together with other Christians. Then there's the joy of singing as we've already experienced tonight. Psalm 95 verse 1 says, Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Psalm 95, 2. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with song. Psalm 98, 4. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord all the earth. Make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praise. Listen, we, we find joy in singing. And listen, we, I, Brother Don sang that song tonight. And, I, and that is just one of his songs that he normally sings. And he does it so well. And I thought, how many times have we heard that song being sang by Brother Don? How many times have we heard it being played on the radio? And yet the, the message and the effectiveness is still the same. It's still bringing glory and honor to him. Amen. And there's the joy of praise. Psalm 27 verse 6 says, And now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. I'm glad we can sing. I'm glad we can bring glory and honor to Him through song. And listen, there are songs that'll, that'll touch us. There are songs that, uh, that'll speak to us. And it could be in different times and different seasons of our life. It could be different things and different trials we may be going through. And those songs speak to us. And boy, what a peace they bring. Amen. But what glory they bring to Him. And then there's joy that's also found in worship. And Nehemiah, once again, 1243, he says, Also that day they offered great sacrifices and rejoiced, for God had made them rejoice with great joy. The wives also and the children rejoiced, so that the joy of Jerusalem was heard even afar off. I thought, I wonder how odd would it be for us to be in the house of God and us to be rejoicing and be praising Him with uh, such a loud voice and everybody in one accord that we wanted to offer praise and glory up to Him uh, that even when the doors closed, uh, somebody on top of the hill out here in Fort Overthorpe would wonder what's going on in that little church down there. Listen, it can happen. But our hearts have to be right with Him first. Christian joy is also found in hope. Psalm 30 verse 5 says, For his anger endureth but a moment, and his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Amen? And why is it that joy comes in the morning? Because a new day brings new hope. Listen, a new day. Think about it. every day we wake up, there's new hope. That could be, that could be the day Christ returns. Uh, every day we live, every day he has given us, every day we abide here, it could be the day that he comes. Christian joy is also found in this eternity. Jude chapter, or Jude 124, it says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. It's found in eternity. 
How is it that, that a child of God can uh, be at death's door and yet face death and say, I'm ready to go? Because we have the assurance of what He has promised in His Word is to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Listen, we have we have hope and we have joy and those things are that are eternal. And listen, we know God is eternal. Therefore, His heaven will be eternal. Amen. Amen. We will live for eternity. Christian joy is also found in this, seeing sinners come to know Christ. In Luke chapter 15, verse 10, he says, Likewise I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repented. Now, how many times have we seen somebody come and they bow themselves on this altar and pouring out uh, their heart to God and with tears and bitterness uh, and they're asking forgiveness of that. Oh, but yet the time that they ask Christ to be Lord and Savior of their life, amen, friend, that is a joyous occasion. There is joy when we see one come to know Christ, amen, because that is why he came. That is why Christ went to the cross. He came to seek and to save. That which was lost. Christian joy. Listen, is also for you the last one. It's also found. It's in him. It's found in our Savior. He said in 1 Peter 1 verse 8. He says, Whom having not seen, you love. And whom, though now you see him not, yet believing. I think about Miss Wright when I read this verse. It says, He rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Listen, have we seen him at any time? No. Is he real? Oh, yes. <laughs> because he lives within our heart. Listen, we know him. We know him from this word. We know the characteristics of him. We know how much he loves us. We know why he went to the cross. And he did that not because he wanted to. He did that because it was the will of God. Amen. He was obedient to the Father when he went to the cross. When he tasted death for every man. <laughs> That's how much he loved us. Amen. Psalm 16 verse 11. That will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Listen, I'm glad we can have joy in Christ. I'm glad we can have joy in the midst of everything that's going on. We can have joy in the midst of our circumstance. We can have joy in the midst of our trials and tribulations every day and whatever we may face, even though it may not be may not be a fun experience, even though it may be a hard experience at times, we can still have joy because of who he is. Let me ask you this. Do you have the joy that you once had? Maybe you're looking at everything that's going on today. You're thinking, how in the world? How in the world can God allow this to go on? I wonder how many folks can go on a daily basis without knowing Christ as their Savior. How long can they allow that to go on? Listen, God is still on the throne. Nothing shocked him. He is still there. And he's still waiting. Christ came to redeem lost man, to reconcile a lost man to a holy God. And that's exactly what he wants for your life today. Friend, if you don't know him, this would be a good day to, to get to know him. And maybe you're, you're looking at everything that's going on in this world and you're wondering with panic and wringing your hands. Friend, just turn it over to him. Seek him. He loves you that much. And he wants to save your soul. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you again for our time tonight. Well, we thank you for the word of God. And I'm thankful we can have joy in you. Lord, we, we're thankful that even in the midst of our circumstances and daily lives and routines, Father, we can still possess joy. And as your word is said, unspeakable and full of glory. Lord, I pray that those that are listening today, Father, if there's a need in their life, I pray you would speak to their hearts. I pray you would help them realize their need of you. Lord, help them to realize there is an eternity that is coming one day. And Father, that we will spend eternity in one of two places, heaven or hell. There is no in-between. 
Lord, I pray that, uh, Lord, even we as Christians, that we make sure that our lives are right with you so that you can use us for your honor and your glory. Father, we're thankful for what you've done, what you're doing in our hearts and lives. We're thankful for what you're going to do in the days to come. And Lord, we just give you the praise, the glory, and honor for all you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.